Screaming waters. Is fascist a banned curse word? Or is it saying down with the fascist government anti-national in its sentiment? If not, then why did the Tamil Nadu BJP president complain against a 28-year-old woman who when she saw the Tamil Nadu BJP state president said down with the fascist BJP government. I agree, create, creating nuisance at an, uh, in an aircraft while the aircraft is airborne is a threat to security and maybe even public nuisance. But then countless corporators, MLAs and some members of parliaments also should have been arrested by now. I admit, sometimes when you create ruckus, attack, abuse, assault someone publicly, you can be detained. Like the countless times, our political activities have been dumped in police vans. But then we need to take a step back and think, are we really curbing dissent? Now we're going to play out the details of this story for you in just a short time. But I am going to quote and excerpt a quote of what Tamilisai Saundarajan said in this video that's playing on the screens right now. She said, one minute, one minute. As soon as I picked up my bag, I hear a slogan, down with BJP's fascist rule. She picked up a bag to get out of the aircraft and somebody yelled this. The aircraft wasn't airborne, the aircraft wasn't even taxiing. She was exiting the aircraft when a 28-year-old girl yelled this. And Ms. Saundarajan says, how is that freedom of expression? How is it free speech? When someone abuses my party, how do you expect me to stay silent? She didn't stay silent. She went, she fought, she argued. She refused to listen to the guards who were standing there trying to calm her down. She then went and filed a police complaint and ensured that this girl was put behind bars. Is that not crushing dissent? Should that be acceptable in our country? That's the big debate tonight. If you call the governing party fascist, you will be arrested. It looks like that is what happened to Sophia Louis. Travelling on a flight from Chennai to Tutikorin, in which BJP State Chief Tamil Sai Sundarajan was also travelling, Sophia allegedly shouted, Fascist BJP government down down. She was taken into custody after Sundarajan filed a complaint with the airport police. He's having such, such uh, uh, words in her mind. Fascism. Yeah, fascism. 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 Will she, will she, will she, no, no, will she talk? No, 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 fascism, like that she will talk. Huh? The, the, the word she used, that itself is the wrong word. Sophia was released from police custody after the magistrate of Tutikoran court warned her and granted her bail on no conditions. A press conference, she has stated that she went and uh, tried to ask uh, Sophia why she did so. But you could see in those videos, it's not the way she's talking over there. She's raising her voice, she's try asking her re repeatedly, how can you say that in an authoritative manner? And that is when Sophia says it is a public for platform. The political parties have taken this opportunity to target each other over freedom of speech and right to dissent. We have to investigate who this lady is, because if she's coming from Canada, then she could be very well uh, LTT. To handle it in a decent manner instead of asking the police to arrest her, she should not have done that. So tonight we ask, is it right to jail someone for sloganeering against a party? Has right to dissent been crushed yet again? Debate begins now. In fact, joining us right now here on The Last Word is Tamil Soi Sandarajan. Let's try and understand from this BJP Neta what really happened. Can you tell us, ma'am, what happened during that flight and afterwards? I was travelling by Indigo aircraft 10.20 uh, from Chennai to Tutukurin. I was sitting in the seat number 3. It was an 8 aircraft. 
she was sitting in the seat number 8 when offloading i crossed street the bus seat 8 that girl was raising some slogan then i turned then she again raised the slogan uh, then i just ignored it and uh, i got down from the flight but in the package area she was staring at me i just asked her why didn't you shout like that inside the aircraft it's not correct then she started rebutting the way she talked and the slogan she raised made me to suspect she may be associated with some organization so i lodged a complaint but apart from that one thing that she said at any time did she approach you actually abuse you or physically assault you no, i didn't tell that why are you asking that question i didn't tell that okay you said it sounded as if she's part of some group you said that uh, it sounded as if this was pre planned why do you think and who do you think really set her up then no i i i can suspect it is up to the police officials uh, to find it out uh, to which organization because she has tweeted my flight time was 10:20 and she has tweeted by 10:22 because the flight was delayed by 10 minutes she has tweeted by 10:22 i am in the flight with dr tamilisai and i am going to raise a slogan and uh, will they kick out kick me out of the flight she has intentionally tweeted and she has behaved according to the tweet and uh, the way she behaved and the words she uttered made me to suspect she may be associated with some organization so it is my duty to complain i lodged a complaint and i left the place for my party work but i'm sure uh, ma'am you wouldn't have uh, known about this tweet until later you wouldn't have known that there's some passenger sitting there tweeting about you until after this incident but anyways why do you specifically think just that one line saying down with the fastest bjp government that could be a citizen who has a political view what made you think she may be with some group uh, no uh, no i cannot say i cannot say it is up to the police officials to find out but i strongly suspect In fact, your complaint and the subsequent arrest uh, of Sophia Lewis has triggered a big debate on dissent. I'm sure you're well aware of that. Is this an attempt? Isn't this an attempt, rather, to crush dissent? No, I repeatedly I'm telling it was an unruly behaviour. Anybody can raise any slogan against anybody. We are not intolerant. Unruly behaviour. The way she behaved. is strongly made me to suspect she may be associated with some organization i am asking do i have a right to suspect some co passenger behaving in a very unruly way in a very suspicious way it is my duty to lodge a complaint i cannot brush away that uh, so i lodge a complaint i have the right when she have the right to express her views i have the right to uh, for a peaceful travel so when i am disturbed it is i have the right to lodge a complaint i did it no but you are also right now even as you're speaking to me and earlier in the day as well repeatedly used words like suspect associated with some a uh, uh, group i am again asking you why are you saying that no it didn't look like just an outburst of emotion by seeing a leader i feel it was a pre planned behavior pre planned attempt to humiliate me she has tweeted and after seeing her facebook and twitters i even strongly suspect even now i strongly suspect she may be associated with some organization tamil sai sandarajan the question everybody is asking tonight is is it right to arrest someone for calling bjp a fascist party no there is a place no there is a forum no is uh, i'm asking is it an offense to raise slogan inside an aircraft is it not an offense tell me 
Okay, so that's her case. And she says, is it not an offence to raise a slogan inside the aircraft? Well, when people are deboarding from the aircraft, if that is the offence, I also have a list of politicians here who've done far worse than just raise slogans, who've thrown slippers, who've pushed, abused the staff at the airport and inside a flight. I also have a list of other citizens, including an incident that took place just a few days ago where a man urinated on the seat of a lady aboard an international flight just a few days ago and no action was taken. So then the question is why was action taken so promptly in this case? Let's say good evening to our guests. So the Ramalingam, senior lawyer, Madras High Court and uh, activist also joining us this evening. Geeta Luthra, also senior lawyer with the Supreme Court. Vinod Selvam, spokesperson for the BJP, Mr. Sarvanan of the DMK, Mr. C. Rajashekran, a lawyer with the Madras High Court, also with us this evening. Uh, let me go across to Mr. Sarvanan first and ask him this. Sarvanan, why do you think uh, Tamil Asai uh, Saundarajan believes that this was a pre-planned yeah. incident, that this, uh, she, this lady is part with some organization out to humiliate the BJP state president? See, the BJP is paranoid. Everything, every single criticism against them is viewed with suspicion. They are painted with the tags of anti-nationals, urban axles, and now association with organizations, suspicious organizations. What is unruly? I don't know what, what she meant by unruly. And the, in the interview, she kept mentioning that it is an offense. It is not an offense. They have slapped section 290 and 25, 75 of the Tamil Nadu Police Act. You cannot arrest. It is a non-cognizable offence. If it is a non-cognizable offence, you need to get the permission of the magistrate. You get to have an arrest warrant. Without that, you cannot arrest anybody. The entire action by the police is illegal. What had happened within the four corners of the airport is now discussed nationally. And the credit, entire credit goes to Madam Tamil Say Saundarajan. Why? Why can't she not have showed little magnanimity? She is a student, 22 years old. Why can't she? She is a much senior person. Why can't she have? The only reason, if you look at the chain of events, the only reason for launching of this criminal complaint is that she refused to apologize. And now where is the question of conspiracy and all the other things? It is pure play of ego. This is what we call the power of the arrogance. Mm. The BJP is drunk on power. They are arrogant. They want to show the people that we will not tolerate any criticism. Earlier, anti-national was a word which was dreaded. Now, it is a badge of honor given by the BJP whoever questions their fascist policies. If fascist BJP down down is the slogan which will land Anybody in prison, we don't know whether this is a democracy or not. Okay. And no, apart okay. from this fact, the... Uh, yeah. No, I think, you know, when it comes no, no. to many See, parts of our country, apart, this has apart, been apart the trend for a fact, long time. This is not the first case of, uh, first example where dissent is being cracked down upon. Not the first party under which it is happening, it's happened and not the first state where it's happening. Though, of course, Tamil Nadu has its own glorious list of examples where any poet, any activist, lawyer, writer who is there to speak up against the establishment has been sent behind bars. But in this case, it's not even that. It's one citizen expressing her view without causing any damage. So, I fail to understand what that could be. Legally, let's take, bring in some views. Uh, Geeta Luthra, what is your view, legally speaking? Does it come under free speech and right to dissent or is this about public nuisance? So, I, I don't think this is at all about public nuisance. And, uh, of course, it's... Uh, the most uh, basic thing, I mean, uh, here's a person, maybe not extremely brilliantly behaved, but is saying down with the fascist BJP, can be saying it about any party in power, can be saying about any person. Uh, I don't think a leader can get provoked like this. And it's most uncalled for to make a complaint but to tar a party with the brush just because one person 
has misconceived notions about herself or her ego or her oversensitivity or her overzealousness is also perhaps not fair. The fact is all of us are becoming so over sensitive and are becoming so such paragons of virtue that you think that dissent does not have to be tolerated and that is in all walks of life. That's why you have this road rage, that's why you have this, this sense of being, of listening to somebody even if it is not your viewpoint. That's what's important in a democracy. Every, every, and this is what John Stuart Mill said that there will be hundred different opinions, there will be one opinion which may differ. That opinion may be right, it may be wrong, but you have to be able to listen to that person. So, obviously, it's an infringement of Article 191A if you, you clamp down on such opinion. Fact that the previous speaker has said, this is under the Tominadu police code, non-cognizable, and you are calling it, an, the person's calling it an offence. She's calling it as if there is some criminality to it. It may be not to her taste, it may be different than her perception, but it's still not an offence. And I think we all have to realise that. We all have to be tolerant. And I'm sure that that one opinion does not reflect a whole party's opinion. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Uh, I'm sure a lot of people from all walks of life will condemn it. Well, we Sorry. hope so. And we would hope that uh, even the, uh, the same party's tall leaders come out uh, and say, no, this is not right. But a uh, few of the news briefings that were held by the party spokesperson, they actually came out to defend the BJP state president saying, well, this is no place. There is always a pla place and time for freedom of speech. And this is not. Now, I don't know why uh, getting uh, while getting out of an aircraft is not a good time to tell somebody that I think your party uh, is fastest and I would hope it comes down soon. Um, and that's a freedom of speech but uh, for according to BJP there has to be a time and place for everything I will take that point across to Vinod Selvam in just a bit but very quickly bringing in view of uh, Sudha Ra Ra Ramalingam as well Miss Ramalingam here are some of the other examples just from Tamil Nadu where cartoonist G Bala was actually arrested for a cartoon that he sketched uh, which in, uh, you know which uh, uh, spoke about the chief minister and some of the actions of the chief minister and it, it was a comment on that and he was booked and arrested for that that uh, uh, we've had Professor Jaya Raman who's been uh, uh, who's seen multiple sedition cases against him because he spoke out of the, uh, and questioned a certain uh, project in the Kaveri de Delta region that was being done by the government. Activ uh, activist Mughalan who was lost in the uh, in a prison because he questioned the river sand mafia. So many examples including the recent Starlight uh, incident where after the police firing massacre people were arrested in hundreds. The court had to step in and give bail to 60, 70 people just like that saying, no, there is no case against them. In the Salem pro uh, pro uh, uh, highway project where the government went about arresting the protesters, the farmers, the court had to intervene and say, no, you cannot do that. You must listen to what these people have to say. Are we seeing more and more incidences where dissent is being silenced by uh, purely because it seems to be questioning the government? Absolutely, you are true. Uh, dissent is being silenced by the government and repeatedly so by the Tamil Nadu government. As far as this case is concerned, it was not merely Section 75 and two, uh, 290 of, of IPC which has been registered, but they have also included, because those two are bailable and uh, non-cognizable, they have also included Section 505 of IPC, which is statements conducing to public mischief, which will attract up to th three years of punishment. I have uh, actually learned from the lawyers who appeared before uh, uh, this girl Sophia that uh, they had immediately filed for an app a bail application and it seems the magistrate at that time was stating that uh, the remand should not be there but she has been pressurized from outside and uh, learned that the senior most of the people from um, the BJP go government including Mr. Gatkari or somebody like people like that have pressurized and even the chief secretary was called 
court and due to these pressures brought about by the to on the magistrate the magistrate had no other option other than to remand this girl which was not at all necessary the magistrates will have to function independently they have to apply the judicial mind they do not apply the judicial minds at all and they do routine post office work if the police is asking for remand they just simply remand that is what is happening i have actually done a case where in a case of um, uh, attempt to rape the girl became pregnant and in, but for not only the uh, accused fellow but even this girl was remanded this was a case which uh, came up a few years ago in in hosur so magistrates routinely doing these things and not exercising their powers properly is something which has happened always and in as far as tutikurin is concerned the earlier magistrate was really good enough to have uh, uh, released everyone on bail despite asking for the state asking for the remand but she was at the verge of retirement she could do it but the magistrates who are not at the verge of retirement mm. are at the mercy, mercy of the state itself so this is a gross abuse of powers by both the police as well as non use of power and sub submitting to the powers that be by the magistrate the magistrates have a duty to record in writing as to the reason why the, she is going being remanded it, uh, the reasons for remand should be that she would uh, interfere with the, with the uh, trial uh, investigation that she would escape the trial that she would uh, tamper with witnesses what is this this is nothing at all that's just merely racing slogan it's right. so petty i don't think so. tamil says on the rajan's father who is a gandhian would have ever had, uh, preferred a complaint like this if there was a slogan racing after all he was a, um, all our freedom fighters did raise slogans for uh, against the state where they all um, hold up for their, their uh, uh, racing slogans this is definitely not the respond the uh, abdication of the uh, abdication of responsibility by the state and also silencing people would mean that our fundamental right to freedom of speech and expression is not being upheld by the state it is being killed and uh, suffocated uh, by the state so it is in violation of the constitution itself right. bringing about uh, such so, sort of uh, petty uh, complaints uh, taking that on file is not to be entertained at all so uh, explain to us then let me take those points that our panelists have raised across to uh, vinod selvam and uh, ask him then explain to us vinod selvam how is this not crushing dissent how is it sorry not crushing dissent isn't it crushing dissent sorry i couldn't hear you isn't it curbing my freedom of speech crushing dissent okay. so um, uh, here we have been having various people yes yes we have been having various people coming in support of uh, ms sofia for the incident which has happened now the bjp has very democratically uh, opposed what has happened and the only thing dr tamarasi saundaraj did was lodge a complaint with the police mm. that some discomfort has been caused and there is absolutely nothing wrong with that mm. who gave sofia the permission to get on and flying aircraft mid air and make any statement of whatever sort it may be it is instigating it could be instigate trying to instigate others to also join in and especially after instance like 911 people should be wary about flying and the rules of flying and this is not the way you behave there are forums if you have anything against us if you have anything against the policies of bjp if you have anything against the decisions made by bjp there are forums for you to go and debate you have social media you have tv channels you have this uh, is not a uh, debate public uh, platforms where you can go up and criticize and so, bjp is open to criticization so So, uh, okay, do, you have, list, do you have a list? Do you have a list, Selvam? Selvam, do you have a list of places? Do you have a list of places where I cannot say that BJP is a fascist party? Is there a list of places? Can I say it in a movie hall? Can I say it uh, outside the chief minister's office? Of course. Can I say? Can, can I say it on the a, road? Yes. Where yes, can I'm I not say you. it? Yes. Where is the view? Seminar? L literature festival? There is a viewers Book gallery launch? at the parliament. If you're going to go to the parliament, and then tomorrow when some which arm army gets to go to the parliament to get up and start making such sloganeering, it needn't be against any individual. You will be arrested, and you will not be getting a bail. 
and that's what's going to happen. So there should this be is not a group of people who are standing outside parliament, place, turning into a security aircraft, threat. Who, who this is not a group of people who was becoming a, a security threat outside the parliament. Shouting will be considered as an offence. No, no, no. Have you have you heard the sequence? Selvam, have you, have you heard the sequence? Have you heard what Ms. Soundarajan was saying at that point of time? Why she got so upset? She said she is being humiliated. She said that this woman is actually yelling and humiliating her. How can she stay quiet when her party is being called fascist? She didn't do it for any other reason except that somebody called her party a fascist party and said down with this government. Now tell me, is that against the law? Is this a dictatorship? Ma'am, she is the most magnanimous lady you'll ever find. The amount of abuse and troll which has been put on her on social media, <laughs> she puts up with everything. She never comes out and reacts. So what? Wha Here on no, no, aircraft, no, 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 no. You say magnanimous lady. You are telling me magnanimous lady. You are telling me magnanimous lady. Let's listen in. It Let's listen into that sequence. No fault on her part. She has democratically lodged a complaint. Democratically <laughs> lodged a complaint. <laughs> listen. <to it. laughs> So, so her problem is that this is not freedom of expression. I don't think her problem is the location of expressing. Will anybody disagree? Mr. Raj Shekhar, do you disagree with that? Speaks for itself. See the dance of democracy, as uh, said by the BJP spokesperson. Democratically, she has given a complaint. Well, ridiculous. I mean, see the dance of democracy in the Tutikorun airport, jumping one side to other and trying to go and attack after she has got the people and supporters. I have nothing against BJP or I have nothing against Dr. Tamilisai Saundar Rajan. We are governed by the Indian constitution. Nobody has the right to speak or attack anybody in the public space. Okay, but the freedom of speech and expression is guaranteed for every Indian citizen. Just raising a slogan is not an offense. Let us understand this issue and case on merits alone. I, I hold no brief to anybody. I don't know who is Sophia, but people don't understand law and they talk rubbish on national TV saying that it is an offense. It's, it's really bizarre. Yeah? Come on, there is a limit for everything. A fascist party doesn't mean you are committing an offence or a crime. So they sh she should have been magnanimous enough to tap her on her back and say, young girl, what is your problem? Just uh, speak to me. And she could have definitely scored a, a political brownie point, point out of it. Instead of going, shouting, yelling, dancing, the democracy dance in the Tutikorin airport. All this is funny and it's only spoiling the reputation of a ruling national party at the centre. And the national president should immediately instruct the state president, Dr. Tamilese, to withdraw the case because this young girl has to go back and finish her PhD degree in Canada. There is a limit for everything. We are not living in a banana republic. We are living in a people's democracy and this is height of everything. And now, okay, I have, I have, uh, I take your point. I have another question for Selvam. <laughs> Selvam, uh, is this lady... Uh, is she on your party's radar of some kind, on some list? Because she has uh, expressed her views very openly about uh, the entire Starlight controversy on social media. She has been vociferous in the past. She's uh, given interviews she about is these issues. Radar. She's, okay, she okay. is not on our radar. But she's, she's not on your radar. She's not on her radar. 
So BJP how did how did right? your He's BJP state president that she know? is going to be doing such an incident? So how did your and BJP Dr. president Rajesh, find Rajesh, out? Mr. Rajeshekar is a very democratic man. He has not spared any political party. He has been in every political party, and today he wants to criticize every political party. And uh, he is the one who talks the maximum oh, rubbish on all TV channels. Oh, who went to attack this? You don't have to get personal here, Mr. Selvam. Mr. Selvam, you don't have to get personal here. And just for your information, member. they were all doing what they were supposed Mr. to do. And they don't get dragged into this. And this, is this is not the debate tonight. This is not the debate tonight. This is not the debate tonight, gentlemen. This is not the debate tonight. Don't get dragged into this conversation, Mr. Rajshekar. Selvam, please take. Take back your personal comments. Please take back your personal comments. Now, what I find difficult to understand right now. And don't don't talk like an immature person, like a leader. No, let's not make personal comments to both sides, please. Mr. Raj Shekran. Mr. Raj Shekran, uh, don't get dragged into that. Ms. Selvam, I have a question for you. If she is not on the radar of your political party, yes. how did she know, how did Ms. Soundarajan know that this lady sitting in seat number 8, A, A B, C, whatever number, uh, knew, uh, was tweeting saying, Dr. Soundarajan is on this flight and I am going to make a comment. Let's see if I get arrested. How did your, your party uh, president of the state know that? Selvam, the question is to you. We have been checking on our tweets after the, it's after it's only so after that's the when that's that when you realize know that these that tweets kind of give us a exists. case we to say no that this is a pre-planned attack. So now you're telling us that this whole conspiracy theory that this was a pre-planned attack Man, that she belongs no to some group is, is because you did a background check Sophia on her is. and BGP went after has her. Better things to do than worry about Sophia. It is only after the incident we wanted to know what is the background of such an incident which happened. And when we went down and checked the tweets, if she is so clean, why would she delete the tweets now? Why is her account clean? Why has she cleaned off all the tweets? If she has nothing to fear, if she has no one backing her, if it had no background to the incident which has happened, why should she delete her tweets? She could have kept them on. Because I will give you, I will give an answer to that because Tamil Nadu and many other states in our country have a reputation of putting people behind bars for their social media posts. Gita Lutra, isn't that true? We we managed to strike Did down one of those controversial uh, acts that we had. See, yeah, I still have the most tolerant parties. We have paid trolls going yes, on Gita every day. Lutra, please. And we are not bothered. It's not every other day BJP goes in law. Let Miss Lutra speak. But I... Himself, yeah, Gita Lutra, please. Gita Lutra. Lutra. Yes. Is see, the best step to democracy. See, I'm not talking... I'm not talking of one party or the other. But let's see a person... Why will a person delete a tweet? It's obviously a fear psychosis. She's... Obviously, this young girl thought that she's doing this very brave thing. And then this whole controversy, I don't think in her wildest dream she could have imagined she'll be arrested. Now, nobody gets arrested for things like this. So, obviously, there's a fear psychosis and she's deleted it. Now, you can't blame her for deleting something for a fear psychosis which she shouldn't have. Because there is freedom of speech in this country. So, can we blame her from removing something which in fact, see everybody is entitled to their opinion. She may be praising one party, she may be blaming another party, it's okay. Uh, you know, each person is entitled to freedom of expression as long as they are not inciting violence. They are not being aggressive or physically violent. Right. So, we... We can't blame her from removing the tweet. I, I don't think one can find fault with her. I think she must have got alarmed at what has been the outburst on what she did was this thing which was this small little act of protest which she was doing. Yes. Which must have made her feel that she was going to do this. Yes. Absolutely. And, uh, that, that's exactly my know, point. Uh, I, and, and you know, she, she, we are given to understand that initially there was pressure on her. The question is, should we be intolerant and should we clamp on her right to have that opinion? After all, it wasn't a public disorder kind of situation. Yeah. It was an incitement to violence. 
So if all that is there, to my mind, let's let's just respect liberty. Let's re respect one of the concomitants of liberty, which is freedom of expression, right to say what you think, whether uh, yeah. 99 people differ with you and nobody else agrees with you. As long as you are not being violent or inciting violence. Um, there is a, the other aspect. Now, this is what uh, the argument many are making from the other side, saying that she was unruly. Mr. Sarvan, I see your hand. I will come to you. That she was unruly while she was still inside the aircraft or in the airport. Yeah. And as per the regulations of the uh, aviation uh, regulator, that that also co counts as public nuisance. But Mr. Raj Shekharan, if it was somebody else, would that person have been put behind bars? If it was an MP who was throwing chappals at the airport or airline manager, these rules don't get applied then? Tanvi, you are right. There are humpty number of incidents in the past. Uh, a MP from uh, TDP, MP from Shiv Sena, MP from DMK, and uh, MP from many other parties have uh, misbehaved inside the aircraft. There was not even a single FAR registered uh, against them. But why this alone? That is the main uh, uh, worry for everybody. See, an ordinary common man, the Aam Aadmi, uh, raises a slogan. You are immediately arrested and put behind bars. And the people come on national TV and try to defend the indefensible for no rhyme or reason, only for political benefits, which they are not going to gain anything from Tamil Nadu. And they attack the uh, messenger. That, that is the only agenda they have got. Either go outwardly and arrest people, if not shoot the messenger. This is the agenda by Tamil Nadu BJP, which is being followed by the youth wing uh, panelists and he is behaving as if they are a kingdom ruled party and they, they can do whatever they want. We are in a people's democracy. Nobody is there permanent for five more than five years. After five years, you are entitled to be removed because the people don't like you. They will vote you out. This is democracy. That is the speciality of India. We are world's famous democracy and vibrant democracy because we select our uh, government which is going to serve us, not put, her, put us behind my bars for any government for that instance. Let it be BJP or Congress. But let us not think too much of ourselves and uh, say, think that we are the kings. We are going to rule forever and ever and ever for generations. That is not going to happen in India. Let's wait for 2019. This is all going to reflect in the elections. In fact, I've got uh, one of our viewers on the phone yeah. line right now, Mr. Kalidas on yeah, the phone me, line from Chennai. Uh, Sarvanan, just hang on for 30 more seconds. Mr. Kalidas on the phone line from Chennai. Good evening. Go ahead, please. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yesterday, she is one class, just calling about uh, BJP politics. Only one word. But uh, the Tamil Shadavan Arsham said to some anti-national personnel and uh, she is uh, some organization person. What's going on in the Indian Constitution? Normal person not spoke about in public places in any organization or uh, parties. Why? Angry from uh, somebody in BJP government and BJP leaders. First of all, BJP leaders learn to how to spoke about in public place. The National Secretary Hachraja and Subramanian Swami and Kondra Dakshin also say about this some terrorist person in, including Tamil Nadu. Why? Why are that to the Tamil Nadu? There are 13 people killed in terrorite in this problem. Why? Yes. The 99, 99 days protest, what, uh, 99, 90 days in protest in two protest. What's going on with the government? Yes, the for 99 days, days so those people in protested in Tutikoran, uh, what about their rights? That's a good question, legitimate question, Mr. Kalidas, that you're asking. And you, you know, I feel that few of these instances are just taken up and highlighted to create this fear psychosis. I think Sudha Ramalingam and Geeta Luthra are extremely right about that. And this is irrespective of that. Let me go across to Mr. Loknath from Bengaluru, also on the phone line, who has a contrarian view. I, I but on like this channel, everybody gets to have a, a, a say. So, Mr. Loknath, good evening to you. Go ahead, please. Okay, we've lost that line with Loknath uh, from Bengaluru. Uh, and I am told that he wanted to say that whatever the BJP representative is saying is right, that aircraft is not the right forum to shout. So that was his viewpoint. Sarvanan, good evening. Uh, uh, I know you've been wanting to make a point for a long time. Go ahead, yeah. say what you wanted. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, Tani, the problem here is the BJP, the leaders of the BJP, the cadres of the BJP, everybody are suffering from inflated egos and wafer thin tolerance. That is the main problem here. I would like to point out the Prime Minister's tweet on 18-4-2018. He says, dissent is the essence of democracy. So please criticize us. I would request Mr. Vinoj P. Selvam to read that in the proper perspective. Take their advice from the Prime Minister in a proper perspective. And go ahead speaking all this. See, nobody likes to be shouted at. If somebody is going to shout at me at a public place, definitely I am going to be annoyed. But that is the price you got to pay for being a public figure, for being a leader. This is happening all over the world. We have seen, we have seen in the US, the US Homeland Security, when she went, went to a restaurant, she was shouted down. She went to a Mexican restaurant. They did not allow her to eat. They said, shame on you, shame on you, shame on you. All the restaurateurs, they shouted that and she walked out of the restaurant. And Sarah Huckabee Sanders, she was not allowed. The restaurant owner refused to serve her because of the political inclination. That is, that spirit is required for the leaders. And that is what was lacking. That magnanimity was lacking. She was an exuberant student who wanted to make a point. And she, what was she gifted with? If, 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 if at all, what she did was a criminal offense. Then probably the arrest was justified. Yes, but Mr. Selva wants to respond. An unjust use of state yes, force. Yes, yes, Velo Selva. Would... Ms. Lamalingam, yeah, coming yeah, to you next. Only, only one point. The only reason she was arrested is the complainant was Madam Tamilese Saundarajan. If the complainant was somebody else, she would not have been arrested. That is the point here. Or if she was somebody else, if she was an elected representative, the, she would not I have would been like arrested. To add the, the air? Yes, yes, Ms. Lamalingam, go ahead, please. You wanted to add something. I would like to add that the aircraft crew mm. did not find anything mm. wrong. Otherwise, they would immediately have complained to the field uh, staff and uh, taken action against her. So, when the crew itself or co other co-passengers did not ever raise the voice or made a, make a complaint and neither did Tamil Say Saundarajan make a complaint immediately within the uh, aircraft. She seems to have come down and after she sees all her uh, uh, chamchas, she uh, prefers uh, she makes a big noise out of the this. That's what we see. And not only that, when an FIR has been registered on her complaint, her father, this girl's father also gives a complaint. That has not been registered to my knowledge till now. Hmm. So what is happening if there is some a complaint and a counter complaint? How can you take only one complaint on a file and not uh, take a complaint on, for, uh, of, um, the, the, on file the, the other complaint? So what the police is doing is just because it is the state BJP president who is preferring a complaint, they'll take it up but not what the common man her father is not even a common man he is also an advocate and also you people were talking about her deleting the tweets should understand that immediately after this problem stopped up her advocate uncle and others had come up so the advocates would have advised her not to have these tweets because in view of the current situations where as far as the Tamil Nadu state is concerned you are being hauled up for writing for talking and even for breathing against the state. So, it's a state of an emergency which has not been clamped but we, we are living in a state where it is more worse than emergency. So, well, and we you are right there Ms. Ramalingam. If the state is going to be fair, it should have registered the complaint of both the complainants. Yes, in fact, uh, our I father did tell us that I have filed a complaint workers. against the BJP uh, state president uh, and the BJP cadre for threatening my daughter's life. The family is claiming that they have been threatened since the time this incident took place. Yes. Yesterday at around 11 o'clock, uh, Sophia was taken to the police station. She was kept there till 8 o'clock. And the airline didn't file a complaint. They may now under they, pressure they if there is a need. The bail today, if she was not... Uh, how would she have gotten a bail if she today? had committed such a grave offence and it is not proper for her to be uh, uh, bailed out, why did they give the bail today without any conditions?
Unfortunately, AI yeah, DMK doesn't give us official the spokesperson to represent their party or the government and its decisions. So it becomes very difficult to even get answers to these questions. And I, I, I highlight this every single time we are having a debate about the Tamil Nadu uh, government, especially the AI DMK government, because they refuse to even respond to media's questions. And that too, I think, is a sign of the way that party thinks the things uh, can be run when you are in power. Vinod Selvam wanted to respond to some of the points. That that had, raised, had, had been raised. Yes, Mr. Selvam, go ahead, please. Now, since Mr. Saravanan was talking about tolerance and speaking about the U.S. homeland security, I would like to remind him that his very own party, the Dinagaran uh, burning incident, when there was a small a poll about the preferred DMK leader published a few years back, their own family members, the first family of DMK, went ahead and burnt the Dinagaran's office and killed three people. And now these are the people trying to preach us about... Uh, 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 intolerance and how to be tolerant and how to uh, uh, um, act on dissent. So I really don't you think it's fair on the part of DMK to come and advise you the BJP lessons. in what any you way. You need lessons. After burning and killing three people, I don't think you have to give us any lessons. You first have to learn amongst yourself. Yeah, Today, can... one person went to receive Mr. MK Allegheny and they've thrown him out of the party. Now all that, you have to first learn within yourselves and then come and advise BJP on how to be and how to behave and we'll then be more than happy to learn from you. Okay. See, BJP has made water boundary a fine Can art. You, calling you the asked them a question. Black. Nehru did that. Indira Gandhi did this. Rahul Gandhi did that. Rajiv Gandhi did this. He if you me. ask them for answers, they have no answers. They have only water boundary. They have they have, they have PhD in water boundary of governance. Mr. Saravanan spoke about the word urban axles. He is forgetting that the word itself was coined only I in the am UPM waiting, and they I am were waiting. very much in alliance When with the will somebody the start calling Sophia anti-national and, and an urban axle <laughs> since she's already made her opinion very clear on Sterlite? I think it will come soon. By tomorrow or day after, somebody will be doing that. Um, uh, we've got Vijay on the phone line from Delhi. Uh, Vijay has a different viewpoint. Go ahead, please. Tell us. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'm specifically talking, uh, minus the political rhetoric that is there, I don't uh, support any political views or political parties on this because I'm a veteran army officer of the Indian Army. I'm talking specifically from the safety and security point of view. Whether the aircraft is ground or in air, the rules apply the same. This lady is not a young lady or a research scholar. Let us not defend her by giving her the age. She is more than 18. She is a major. She knows what she is doing. She is studying in Canada. Number one, she knows the international rules of the civil aviation. If she has a political view, I am of the same opinion that there is a place, there is a time for everything. You want to express your view, please do it. It is a freedom of speech. She has the right to do. But compromising the safety and security of the passenger, whether the aircraft is on ground or in air, is not acceptable. Internationally, they are observing. Right. And second thing, what I want to emphasize. So, I just, uh, Vijay, Anubhav, just to Anubhav, your Anubhav, point, I take Anubhav, your point. Anubhav, Anubhav. There are lots, so a lot of people out there who Anubhav, believe that this compromise the uh, security and was against the rules. It may Anubhav, be, Anubhav, but the Anubhav. airline should have been the one that came out to then file a complaint. The Secondly, complain. the aircraft wasn't airborne at that point of time. The aircraft had already landed, and this lady made one comment. And that was that. She was sent behind bars for that. How many times do our uh, public figures get cheered or get booed at when they are walking around? That's part of public life. You don't send those people behind bars every time somebody <coughs> boos uh, Virat Kohli if he, after he comes back after losing a match. It's the same thing. Why should it be different if it's your view against a political party? I'm out of time, Mr. Rajshekran. Sorry, I won't be able to come to you. But to those who are making this argument, if the rules are there and rules are broken, surely action must be taken and a complaint should have been filed against that woman but if that is the case then why was there no action taken until there were days and days of media outrage when Shiv Sena MP Ravindra Gaikwad attacked the airline staff on board an aircraft why was there no action taken when the TDP MLA at the airport slapped the airport airline manager we have a countless list here. Why is our Congress party member Andhra Pradesh MP slapped an Air India station master at the Tirupati airport? In 2008, Rajasabha MP PV Abdul Wahab asked, was asked to get off the Air India aircraft because he created ruckus. 
after he came late for the flight he was not put behind bars for if you are talking about breaking the rules in the name of security there are countless times the people are let off without even a complaint including the man who urinated on a lady's seat on an air india aircraft he wasn't put behind bars for it rules are different for different people unfortunately that is the reality but the bigger question tonight is was she put behind bars was this done only because all she said was down with the fascist bjp government and if that is the case then that is really unfortunate in this country everybody has a right to their view and that should be heard out in fact i believe ms soundarajan should have turned around and spoken to that lady try to understand what her view point was rather than creating ruckus rather than going after that lady as she did in this visual where the security guards had to step in and calm her down thank you to all our panelists for joining us this evening thank you viewers